grace, mercy, and peace. They are yours. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon this morning is based on Jesus' parables from Matthew chapter 13. I'll read the verses that you see printed on the screen. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Have you understood all these things, Jesus asked? Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Everything must go. Sell your house. Live on the street. If you have two houses, you can't get away with just selling the bigger one and living in the smaller one. No, you've got to sell both. Be exposed to the 105 degree heat we've been having. No AC. And when the winter comes, try not to get frostbite on your fingers. Sell your clothes. You can't even keep one outfit. You have to go everywhere naked. If they'll let you go anywhere, well, you can't go to work, can't go to school. You might be all right now outside without the roof over your head when it's still warm, but winter is going to come. It's going to be kind of brutal. And just the shame and the embarrassment. We wear clothes to cover up the parts of ourselves that we don't want people to see. Sell your car. Sell your phone. Sell everything. I have to admit, that'd be pretty hard. Could you do that? Jesus stretches the limits of our faith with these teachings today. We read three parables of Jesus. We're going to focus on the first two. The first one, he tells, a man finds a treasure in a field. Why is he looking in a field for treasure? Maybe he was working the field for somebody else. Maybe he'd heard some rumors that there was a treasure buried in that field. Maybe he just knew, as many people did back then, that if you had a treasure, you needed to keep it somewhere, People buried treasure in the fields. But he finds this amazing treasure. So what does he do? He's dug it up. Why doesn't he just take it? Well, then the owner of the field would have a legal claim to it, and he'd probably have to give it up. So he buries it again. But why doesn't he just offer to buy the treasure from the owner of the field? Well, they'd have to get it out, and they'd have to get someone over to appraise how much it's really worth, and then he would end up paying the value of that treasure, if he could even afford it. And when he finally decided to start offloading some of that treasure, he'd really just get the same value back. So he decides he has to buy the field. But he doesn't really have the money on hand. So he goes off and he sells everything he has. His house, his clothes, his donkey, everything. He's destitute. And he goes back to the owner of that field. Maybe he's just covering himself with a bag. He's holding the money in. And he buys the treasure that's in the field. He buys that field so that he can have the treasure. Jesus doesn't continue the parable, but it's implied then that he gets the treasure and now he is able to buy better things than he had before. A better house, better clothes, a better donkey. The reason he is willing to sacrifice everything for The field which the treasure is in is so that he can get the treasure that will give him a better life. Selling 
everything to get the treasure is worth it. Now, understanding this parable is a little tricky. Jesus' concern in this parable isn't really so much the man's actions, but his attitude, which propels his actions. Jesus makes the point that this man is joyful on finding this treasure. So joyful that he is willing to sell everything he has just so that he can have it. And what causes the joy? It is the treasure, of course. The treasure which promises him a better life than he already has now. Now this is where we have to leave the parable behind and see Jesus' meaning. In the parable, the man exchanges earthly wealth so that he can get more earthly wealth. To have a better earthly life. But what Jesus is offering is better than any earthly possessions. He's offering spiritual wealth. He's offering eternal life. The treasure he offers is the kingdom of heaven. In this kingdom, he removes our shame and guilt. He took the world's guilt and shame on his shoulders and nailed them to the cross. He brought innocence and value and worth to you when he made you his child, when he brought you to faith into his kingdom. And that innocence, that value, makes you at peace with God in heaven so that you can sing your praises to him and lay out even your most desperate requests before him. And if all that seems a little hard to grasp, if all that seems a little intangible, he's promised you everything better than what you have now. A better home, home, a mansion in heaven, better clothes, washed in his blood, custom designed by God for you to wear, a better body, one that doesn't age or break, a better life, completely free from everything that causes pain and suffering and sadness. This is the treasure we found. Jesus then tells a similar parable. A man, this time a merchant, has gone in search of fine pearls. And in his search, he finds one pearl of enormous value. It's so valuable that instead of buying just a few pearls of lesser value with the money that he's got in his pocket, he goes away and he comes back, having sold everything that he has so that he can buy just the one pearl. The man who found the treasure in the field seems to have just kind of happened upon it. But this man was looking for pearls. He was searching for something of great value, and he finds a pearl beyond his wildest dreams. And when he finds it, he is willing to sell everything to have it. What pearls do people pursue? In other words, what do they look for to give their lives value, to fill the hole in their hearts? Some people do turn to wealth. If they can just get enough, then they'll feel like they've made it. Others turn to fame and influence. How many subscribers do you have on Instagram or TikTok? Others to worldly philosophies, others to psychology. Maybe they even collect a few pearls here and there because they don't quite fit together right in that hole. Maybe you can relate to pursuing pearls like this. Maybe there are some pearls that you're clutching right now as I'm talking about it. The kingdom of heaven is worth more than all of these combined. Though these other pearls, some of them even false pearls, perhaps offer comfort for a time, 
or fill the hole for a little bit, or even contain a small kernel of truth, they aren't as valuable as the kingdom of heaven. They can't offer what the kingdom of heaven does, which is a relationship with God and the promise of eternal life. So what does Jesus want to teach us? Notice he doesn't say, so you now also go and sell everything you have so that you can get the kingdom of heaven. That's not his point. The point is not to say, oh, you can buy the kingdom of heaven. He wants to teach us the value of the kingdom of heaven. It's worth more than anything we own. It's worth more than everything we own. If we had to, we would want to give it all up just so that we could have this priceless treasure. And then, as we study God's word, and we see all of Jesus' life, and we see all of God's promises, he turns all of it on its own head. This treasure, this kingdom of heaven, the promises of God, peace with him, and a life in heaven forever, a life free from guilt and shame, the promise of a better home, heavenly robes, robes and eternal life, the, this treasure that should be out of your reach, the treasure that should definitely not be free, he gives you as a gift. Jesus has paid for the field. Jesus has bought the pearl. And he gives it to you free of charge. When, by the Holy Spirit's power, we get how valuable the kingdom is, then Jesus does two things for us. On the one hand, he rips the idols out of our hearts. All those things we value more than his kingdom. And they aren't always fancy cars and big houses. Whatever holds your heart, what you wouldn't sell for anything, even for the kingdom of God, Jesus takes that from you. Sometimes he just kills it in your heart and replaces it with trust in God. Other times he literally takes it from you and replaces it with his promises. The second thing he does is increase our joy over his kingdom. He reminds us again and again of God's promises to us to give us a better home, better clothes, a better life. As he brings us again and again to his word, he opens those storehouses again and again, bringing out treasures old and treasures new, filling up our coffers with spiritual wealth. Jesus returns to the theme of treasures at the end of what we heard today. He tells one more parable about the catch of fish in the great net, the net is thrown into the sea and brings all kinds of fish in. The good are collected and put in baskets. The rotten fish are thrown away. He says that that is the angels coming and separating the righteous from the wicked. The wicked will be thrown into a blazing furnace. Being in the kingdom means Jesus saves us from suffering eternally. And then Jesus asks his disciples, have you understood all this? He's not just talking about the three parables we heard today, but all seven parables that he told in Matthew 13. And they answer, yes! They have understood. Maybe seems a little cocky on their part, but they say they have understood. And so Jesus says, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures, as well as old. That term teacher of the law often refers to men who are specifically trained to teach the law. Sometimes they're called scribes. But Jesus is talking about his disciples. He's using the term more broadly here. And what have the disciples become? They have become like the owner of a storehouse, bringing out treasures old and new. These disciples 
who, as Peter will say in Matthew 19, just a few chapters later, who have left everything to follow Jesus. They knew the Old Testament stories. They had learned the law of Moses in synagogue. They had heard the promises of the Messiah. Old treasures. But they also had seen the Messiah right in front of them. Had seen promises of God fulfilled. Heard God's teaching from the, his, God's own lips. They had the old treasures and the new. Soon they would spread these treasures far and wide. We too have a treasure to share. Hold up. Share the treasure? Imagine if you had worked your whole life to amass a treasure for yourself. You had worked hard. You had sacrificed. You had given everything to have this treasure. And now you're supposed to share it? Just give it away? Or this pearl we've found. The kingdom of heaven. One thing that stands out in Jesus' parable is the uniqueness of this pearl. Pearl. It is a pearl of great value to which no other pearl can compare. If you bought a really expensive car and brought it to church this morning thinking that you would stand out, and then when you pulled into the, the parking lot, you saw that someone else had just bought the exact same car, wouldn't it feel like your new car wasn't really all that special or unique anymore? If the kingdom of heaven were like any other treasure on earth, we might think that we need to be careful with how we use it. After all, any earthly treasure can run out or be used up. If we had to give everything to get it, why should we just give it away? Maybe that all kind of sounds kind of silly, since you know we're talking about the kingdom of heaven. But even if you don't think about it that way, You've likely acted that way. You're a Christian your whole life. You've been through the struggles. You've made the sacrifices. And someone can come to faith on their deathbed? That's not fair, right? Sure, God lets good people into heaven. Wait, you're telling me he also lets murderers and sexual criminals into heaven? Maybe this treasure isn't all that special. What do you mean share the treasure with everyone? You don't mean them too, do you? What if I told you that having an attitude like this about sharing this treasure this kingdom of heaven is what truly devalues it. When we think or act like the kingdom of heaven is a finite resource instead of the infinite treasure that it is, an infinite treasure from the infinite God, when we forget how we came to have this treasure in the first place, that we didn't have to sell everything to get it, it was a gift, a gift from God, not something we earned when we don't see that this pearl's uniqueness is found compared to the other less shiny pearls, rather than the fact that, oh, I'm the only one who has it. When we don't recognize that God's kingdom is, in fact, large enough for all, even for me, and that is one of the greatest factors in its value, Jesus forgive our hoarding of his kingdom. Thankfully he does because he has brought enough treasure from heaven to cover all sin and poured it out on us through his cross. Jesus help us see your kingdom can never lose its value no matter who's a part of it. It can never run out no matter how many come to believe. And it can be shared by all because it is given, not earned. And when he helps us to see this, 
then we will be eager to share this treasure we have. To share it with each other. To share it with our community. And this eagerness to share, which comes from Jesus' own generosity to us, will pour itself out in sharing the good news in every way we can. By our own personal witnessing. By supporting the work here at Atonement. And around the country and around the world through our national church body, Wells, by using the treasures he's given us of time and talents, by giving everything we can to spread the kingdom so others may share in this priceless treasure. What even a privilege this is. What even more value God gives to us that he would allow us to stand at the door of the storeroom and open it wide so that others can share in the treasure too. So this is the challenge for you today. To share this treasure with somebody. It can be as simple as sharing it with the person in the car with you on the way home. They need that treasure too. Or sharing it with somebody that you see when you're out and about today, at lunch, at the gym, wherever you're going, Home Depot. To share this treasure that has been freely given to you, that cannot be taken from you. This treasure that's worth everything. Amen.